In this video, we want to take a look at a group of compounds known as hydrates. We'll be using these compounds in our lab this week. We want to look at some of the basic concepts revolving around hydrates and the basic problems we can do with hydrates. It'll be very similar to the type of problem that we're doing in the lab. Hydrate problems are very similar to empirical formula problems, so that's why we include them at this point in the course. A hydrate is defined as an inorganic salt containing water molecules combined in a definite ratio as an integral part of the crystal solid makeup. They either bond to the metal center of the ionic compound or are crystallized into the whole solid complex. So basically you have an inorganic salt, which means an ionic compound, a metal with a nonmetal, in which water molecules are bonded into the solid structure. When we write the formula for hydrate, the example, that, the way that we do it is we write the name of the anhydrous compound. Anhydrous means without water. So the name of the compound without water, a dot, and then the number of water molecules, where, so NH2O, where N is the number of water molecules per unit of the salt. An ionic compound like this is commonly referred to as a salt. So we could have an example of a number of these. For example, CuCl2.3 H2O. So this would be copper 2 chloride with three water molecules bonded to it, or MgOH2.2 H2O. So these are typical examples of the way you would see this written. You see a compound, ionic compound, metal with nonmetal and then bonded to a number of waters. Naming for these compounds is very similar to the naming we did before. You follow the exact same naming rules for the ionic salt, and then you put a prefix followed by the word hydrate to stand for the number of water molecules. So in our case that we just looked at, CuCl2.3H2O, the name for this would be copper 2 Chloride, the name for CuCl2, and then we would put tri for three hydrate. Or that second example I did, MgOH2 dot 2H2O, would be magnesium hydroxide, and then di hydrate. So it's going to be the same naming as our ionic compounds with then a prefix and the word hydrate to stand for the waters. Solving for the formula of a hydrate is the exact same as solving an empirical formula problem. You find the number of moles of the ionic salt and the number of moles of water. Instead of finding moles of each element, we find the moles of the compound. We divide the number of moles by the smallest value, and then we make that a whole number ratio of salt to water. So we're going to look at a couple of example problems of this, and this should be a good reminder of empirical formula problems. A 20 gram sample of hydrate of nickel 2 sulfate, which is NiSO4, lost 9.63 grams of water when heated. So commonly with a hydrate, when you heat it up, the water will evaporate. And you can figure out the mass of just the anhydrous compound and the mass of the water. And this is exactly what we're going to do in our lab. We'll take a hydrate, heat it, to see, figure out how much water is lost, and then use that to find the formula. So just like with empirical formulas we've done, we're going to put, in this case, compounds, whereas last time we used elements. We'll make a column for each one. The nickel 2 sulfate will be 20 minus 9.63, since it lost 9.63, so it'll be 10.37 grams, and the water will be 9.63 grams. Our first step is to change into moles. One mole, take the molar mass of nickel sulfate, which is 154. 0.76 grams. So I added Ni 58.69, S 32.07, and four oxygens, 16 each, and came up with 154.76. When I do that, I get 0.06701.
Do the same thing with water, 9.63 grams. One mole over 18.02 grams. This will come out to eight, or no, this will come out to, sorry, mistake, jumped ahead of myself, 0.5346 moles. Now, divide each number of moles by the smallest value. So in this case, the smallest value will point B.06701. So that'll give us 1. 0.5346 divided by 0.06701 will give us 8. So now we have our formula. NiSO4 dot 8 H2O. So it's just like an empirical formula problem, except now we're working with compounds instead of elements. We'll try one more. This one actually involves an empirical formula. A hydrate contains copper, sulfur, oxygen, and lost 9 grams upon heating. Originally, the hydrate weighed 25 grams. Analysis of the substance revealed that the 6.4 grams of copper, 3.2 grams of sulfur, and 6.4 grams of oxygen were present. Find the formula of the hydrate. So first, we need to find the formula of the compound made of copper, sulfur, and oxygen. You can probably get a good guess as to what this is going to be, but we're going to solve it out. We have 6.4 grams, 3.2 grams, and 6.4 grams. We need to change to moles. So for copper, one mole over 63.55 grams, which gives us... 0.10, 3.2 grams, one mole over 32.07 grams, which gives us 0 0.10, and 6.4 grams, one mole over 16.00 grams, and you get 0 0.40. Now we're going to divide each by the smallest one. 0.10 divided by 0 0.10, which will equal 1. 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.10, which 1 0, which will equal 1. And 0 0.40 divided by 0 0.10, which will equal 4. So the formula of our compound, our anic salt, is CuSO4, or copper 2 sulfate. Now I'm going to flip to a new screen so that we can do the hydrate part of the problem. So we have CuSO4 and H2O. We know that the H2O lost 9 grams, and the hydrate originally weighed 25. So 25 minus 9, which would be 16 grams. So we need to convert each to moles. One mole, we take Cu, 63.55, sulfur, 32.07, four oxygens at 16 each and get 159.62 grams. This comes out to 0.1. Take nine grams, do one mole over 18.02 grams, and we get 0.5. Divide each by the smallest one, So we get 1 to 5, so our compound is copper sulfate dot 5 H2O, or name-wise that would be copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. So hydrate problems are very similar to empirical formula problems except we're working with compounds.